Hello friends! My name is Talene Saunders, intern pastor here at Augustana Lutheran Church. I come to you today for the last time as this year-long internship sadly comes to an end. My time with you has been a sheer joy and I will miss you all very much. I'd like to share a little about the internship process to give you some insights into my experience. First, all prospective interns have to fill out paperwork, a combination resume and belief statement. We tell the seminary what we are looking for in a church. I wanted a church with lots of natural light and a congregation that sang together. I found the best spirit comes with good music and a lot of sunshine. The students and pastors then interview each other over the course of about two days. When I went to meet with Pastor Auni, he wasn't there. I waited, not long. He had been in the room across the hall talking with a colleague because that's the kind of pastor he is. He cares about people, whether they are colleagues, staff, folks in the congregation, or even strangers in the community. Building relationships through the love of Jesus Christ is what Pastor Auni does best. And over the past year, I have been honored to work with this kind and patient man, and by extension you, the congregation a people of sunshine and music who are not afraid to open your hearts to student pastors year after year. I've been your 10th. I thank Pastor Auni, the staff, and especially you, the people of Augustana, for sharing the love of Jesus Christ with me over these past 12 months. It has been a blessing to be your pastor. I chose this week's scripture reading specifically for this occasion. It is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. St. Paul writes, The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. For me, the joy of the living word and scripture means that it is as relevant for us today as it was for the time in which it was written. Now, the background for the Corinthians was a bit different. According to commentary by Richard Neal Donovan, in the late 40s of this era, Judea was experiencing a famine and Christians in Jerusalem were in need. As recorded in Galatians and also in Acts, the leaders of the Jerusalem church, James, Peter, and John, requested help. So here, Paul is encouraging the new Christ followers in Corinth to send relief to Jerusalem. 
In the previous chapter, Paul uses the Maccadean church as an example of generosity, Maccadea being the Greek province directly north of Corinth. I can't help but think if Paul was writing to us today, he might use Minneapolis as our bait. You know, stroking his long beard. Minneapolis contributed to this offering generously of their own accord, in spite of their poverty. Chapter 8, verse 3. We might think Paul is laying on the guilt trip, but then he clarifies the challenge to the Corinthian church by talking about Christ. He writes, For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Chapter 8, verses 8 through 9. It's not a guilt trip at all. It's a way to bind these new churches together through the work of Jesus Christ. Chapters 8 and 9 are all about grace and generosity. Now let me ask you a question. What makes you a Christian? Is it your generosity? Is it your devotion to the teachings of Jesus? Or is there something more, something relational that binds you and all Christians into one church? The second letter to the Corinthians can be a bit difficult to read, as many scholars believe this one book is actually a few letters combined into one. But I invite you to read chapters 8 and 9 as you contemplate my question. May I pray for you? God of abundance, I come to you in thanksgiving for these wonderful people who have blessed me with patience encouragement, and love. It has been a gift to worship with you as one church family. We have shared one heart, one mind in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Blessings on your year ahead. And in the words of the Apostle Paul, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen.